Hi there, Regina Sanchez, your spiritual life and health coach, believing in you. Welcome today to my video podcast, giving you a fresh start. And I am going to um, do a little paradigm shift in my teaching and give you a uh, fresh start with your spiritual life. So pause this video, take a break if you need to. Um, I'm just preparing my notes and such here. Um, get yourself your favorite beverage. I am right now drinking a really nice ice cold glass of fresh distilled water. And uh, I just enjoy that every day. So, you know, pause this video, go get your favorite beverage. Uh, come on back and let's get into this teaching. So um, we've been talking on, you know, giving you a fresh start with your immune system. But what I want to focus on uh, these next number of weeks, I'm not even sure how long, um, but there's a lot to cover. Um, in, and I want to focus on, you know, giving you a fresh start with your spiritual life. And if you... Um, ever listen to some of my other teachings where I talk about uh, the circle of life. And it was something that I was trained in with my health coaching from the Institute of Integrative Nutrition. And uh, basically what it is, is a circle with spokes like a wheel. And on each spoke is different aspects of your life. Um, you know, some of it might be your creativity, your finances, your, um, your diet, you know, your food intake, your education, your health, uh, your social life, joy, right? And what you're supposed to do is put a dot, right, on the, on the spoke of the wheel, all right. It, for each of those categories would, that I just mentioned, there's a few that I left out, physical activity, um, home cooking, your home environment. And you're supposed to place a dot at the center of the circle to inter, you know, to indicate how happy you are or how at peace you are with that you know, segment of your life. So um, the closer you are to the inner part of the circle, indicates you're not happy when you you know put your little dot at, towards the end of the circle right the outside of the circle the bigger circle it means you're you're content with that aspect of your life and then you're supposed to kind of like draw a line to each of the dots to see how balanced your life is um, and I am going to have a link below in this video that gives you um, a, a PDF of the circle of life and you can download it. And I recommend that people do it, you know, once a quarter, once every six months, but maybe at least once a year, you know, fill it out, put the date on it, and then just, you know, go back to it a number of months later to determine where you fall and what changes you have made. So it gives you an idea what parts of your life um, are out of balance or you're dissatisfied with. So, um, one of those spokes is spiritual life. And where are you with your spiritual life? So what I've covered in the past number of weeks, you know, we talked about our water and drinking, you know, our water. Is your water safe? We talked about your toothpaste, right? And the chemicals that can be found in toothpaste. We talked about the items that you put on your body. We talked about the, the food that you put into your body. Um... We talked about the fragrances and so forth in your home and your cleaning products and your laundry detergents and all of that. Um, we talked about fear and how fear can impact your health. We talked about processed foods and avoiding them and avoiding sugars. Uh, I even did a little segment on tea and the importance of drinking organic tea. Uh, we talked uh, and spent a little time on dairy and how, um, you know, ultra pasteurized dairy, which is 100% of the dairy you find in the grocery store, is unhealthy. 
Um, we talked about the preservatives and the additives and the food colorings and flavorings in your food and how they could be neurotoxins to you. And we even started early off on talking about the history of the chemical medications that, that we take. So I gave you sort of a battery of teachings on building your immune system and giving you a fresh start with your immune system. So today, I want to shift over to giving you a fresh start in your spiritual life. And, and you can ask, well, why is that important? Why do I need to worry about, you know, my, my spiritual life? Well, you know, one of the things is if you have a relationship with the one who created us, right? The creator of the universe, right? Can be very significant to our health and well-being. When we walk alongside the creator of the universe and not the universe itself, it, it could bring you healing and an abundant life. That's the promise from God. And I know so many times, you know, I, and I especially heard this when I was doing a lot of business networking years ago and, and people would say, well, I asked the universe and I would sit there and think, why don't you ask the creator of the universe? You might get a better answer or a clearer answer than the universe, okay? But also knowing that he knew about you before he conceived you in your mother's womb will give you more insight into why you are here on this earth. Or also knowing that in heaven, there's a book written about you and about, you know, God's plan and his purpose and his will for you. And you can read about that. Go to Psalm 139. It's a beautiful psalm. Read about how he has a book in heaven written about you. And he knows your past and he is walking before you to make it clear your future as you move into your future. But getting to know the divine healer, the creator of the universe, is key to our life, okay? Understanding the connection with our emotions and ill health and how having a relationship with the creator can heal and reverse your dis-ease. Do you know that our identity is actually written on our cells? And, you know, it's so interesting because I experienced a lot of trauma in my life. And I just, I, I couldn't define this, but I, there was this part of me that knew that this was true. And it wasn't until recently that I started digging more and doing some research and reading a really fabulous book, book about, um, you know, about our divine healer. Uh, the name of the book it's by Dennis and Dr. Jennifer Clark, Releasing the Divine Healer Within. It's fabulous, fabulous science, the biology of belief and healing. And it just confirmed some things I knew, but I just couldn't really, I just couldn't give it a significant meaning or a more defined meaning. But there was this part of me that knew that like my computer in my brain or whatever was storing the trauma in my life that, that I never received full healing on. Maybe I got partial healing. Maybe I got no healing on it. Because there could be things in my life that would trigger such a tremendous emotional response. And it was, you know, not that significant, right, of an issue to cause my body's reaction so I knew there had to be more in my body that, you know, this little incident that was happening um, was causing my body to react in such a way because it was just piled on top of all the tr other trauma that that triggered. I hope I'm making sense here. But, you know, in doing further study on this, because I really wanted to get to the root of this for myself. I wanted to be healed of this. I didn't want any more little issues to raise my blood pressure or just cause this anxiety to well up in me. I wanted 
to walk in peace a peace that is beyond all understanding, a, pe a peace that's promised to us that we don't need to live in anxiety and depression. We really don't. And I wanted that for my life. And so when I began to dig deeper and do some research, I found that, that what I was thinking and not really being able to define fully was there was some truth to it, right? And the truth is that our identity is written on our cells, okay? And some of the scientific proof about that is, think about organ trans, uh, transplant recipients. So they get a heart trans, this person, you know, Sally Jones gets a heart transplant from a person that has, let's say, anger issues. Well, Sally Jones, over time, starts to develop anger issues. And it was sort of out of character for Sally Jones. And, and it just couldn't make sense. And what the science is showing, because they've done a lot of, of research on this with organ transplant recipients, was that that anger in that heart transplant person that, don that donated their heart, had anger issues on their cells. So it was just so fascinating. I had to do more research and understanding um, because I wanted my cells, now that I had it more defined, like I, like I said, I was calling it the computer in my body um, that you know needed to be reprogrammed, right? We needed to write new software for it um, to get rid of the trauma. But um, this was just so fascinating for me. And our physical environment can change our cells, right? It can change what our cells are storing and reading. We can, we can, we can make those physical changes by our nutrition, you know, by supplements. Do you know if we have too little water, our cells will dehydrate. If we don't give our body the proper nutrition, our cells become malnourished. So our physical environment is not the only thing that can change our cells, but so can our emotions. Unhealed trauma can bring on dis-ease. Stress can affect every organ in our body down to the cellular level. And our emotional memory is stored at the cellular level. And our, our emotions inscribe who we are on ourselves. So let me give you an example. Um, sadly, one of the things that my dad did when he was angry with all of us, but I'm going to just say me. I don't know if it affected all my sisters. It affected me. When my dad was angry, you know, he would scream at us and call us names. He didn't know how to discipline us in a fatherly, godly way. So he would scream at us, number one. Number two, he would call us names. And one of the, the names that I was called was stupid. So those words that constantly are constantly, when you're a little child and you are hearing things like that from an authority figure in your life, you start to identify yourself in that way. So that lie, those lies, those lies, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, infiltrated my cells and caused me and my body to react to the fact that I was stupid. It has taken years to undo that. And I'll tell you, sometimes it still pops up inside of me. But I'm so much better now of realizing, ooh, okay, that lie has just popped its ugly head and I'm not going to accept it. But unhealed trauma can bring on these um, irregular cell activities, right? Our emotional memory is stored at the cellular level and our emotions inscribe who we are 
on our cells. It holds on to our belief system about ourselves, And our cells can read emotional information through our emotion receptors, which are on the surface of every cell. And those receptors just grab a hold of the words that are being spoken or the emotions that are being received, okay? Uh, if somebody, you know, has dealt with trauma and has been rejected, though that, that rejection is just getting, you know, implanted into those receptors. The receptors are, are grab a holding that, those words. You are rejected. Nobody loves you. You're not worthy. You're not worth anything. You're not a good friend. You're not a good mother. You're not a good father. You're not a good sister, brother, whatever. You're not a good worker. Uh, you know, whatever. You define it. But this emotional information is gone, goes into ourselves. And those receptors just keep on, keep those, those emotions. Uh, and that's why, though, we can make those changes, right? So these identity uh, receptors that are on our cells, they hold our entire life story. Have you ever heard the saying, their heart is written on their sleeve? And we may have stuffed the trauma away from our conscious mind, but it's still there. And, and that's why I said, I knew, I knew there was still, and I, I've been healed of trauma. I've been healed of the sexual abuse, right? I, I'm, I have been divinely healed. And at, at some point we'll get into the specifics of that. But there were other traumas, and I still think there are some traumas that, that need to receive the healing so that, so that those now cell receptors can receive now truth and can now receive that healing so that now I can respond to things in a different way. But just because our conscious mind has removed um, you know, a trauma or, or a lie or a negative emotion does not mean it's not still there. It's still there. And you're responding to it one way or another, somehow in your life. And how, how do I mean, let me, let me dive a little bit into this. So I was sexually abused. Um, there were moments in my life, a good part of my life where, um, I, 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 it was pushed back. I didn't even recognize it, even when I was asked. And I, no, you know, I didn't even think of it. But in time, God brought it to the surface. And, and fortunately, he did it at the absolute perfect time where I was able to, and I was in an environment to receive divine healing from three beautiful women that were praying over me in this particular instant. Um, and I'll, I'll go into details, you know, at another time, but I received that healing. Now, literally, literally, I, I, I can't even begin to tell you what was released from my body. But then about four years later, um, my marriage was really in a bad place. And I wanted for us to go to therapy. My husband at the time refused. So I thought, okay, I'm going because I couldn't live anymore the way we were living. And when I, you know, went to therapy to deal with my marriage, I realized that I still had some healing that needed to be done with the sexual abuse. And so her and I, my therapist and I spent months, you know, working on the next level. And there would be times that I would be in a session with her, you know, and a memory had come up and I was sitting in the chair in a fetal position, couldn't take the pain that I literally wanted to run out of the room. And she would calmly say to me, sit with it, stay with it, Regina, stay with it. It's only a memory. It's not the act. And so I would stay with it. I would stay there. I wouldn't run out of the room even as much as I really wanted to just get out of there. Um, and when I would calm down, she asked me if I wanted to talk about it. And I might or I might not have or whatever. 
Um, and then she would say to me, can you now, now that you're in that memory, can you now invite Jesus Christ to come in and heal you? And I am telling you, this was the most profound, incredible healing. And I would invite him in. I would ask him to heal that specific issue, that specific memory. And like that, the pain was gone. And I don't know about you, and you know, if, if any of you have been in therapy dealing with some traumas that were intense, and you would walk out of a session exhausted, right? Because the, the, it was intense work, right? I'm telling you now that when I invited the Lord to come in and heal that specific situation, and it came like that, that I walked out of this session free. Free from the, the trauma of that specific memory or that specific in, issue. I did not go home exhausted. I did not go home with anxiety or depression. I went home healthy and whole. And we had layers to deal with, you know, and I, I, you don't remember how long it was. This was a number of years ago, maybe two, three months worth of work. At this point, I had already had received a significant amount of healing. But it is so important that's why I, I firmly believe that we cannot receive true, true healing without the Lord. That's just, it's my opinion, but it's based on my experience. So knowing that our cells are holding on to these memories, um, but that we can now go to the creator of the universe, the creator who created us and get that healing. But it requires a spiritual relationship, a spiritual life. Our toxic emotions in our cells can be replaced by the supernatural peace of God. And having that relationship with the creator, like I said, will help you do just that, my friends. And I promise you. So tune in next week Lord, as I begin to give you bite-sized pieces of giving you a fresh start with your spiritual life. I hope this helped. I hope it sheds a little light for you. I hope you will take some time and look at your spiritual life. And is it stagnant or even non-existent? And I hope you'll take a few minutes a little bit of time and make a decision that you want to develop your spiritual life because there's so much goodness that you can have in your life if you choose to do that. So be blessed, be at peace, have a great, a great week, and I will see you next week. God bless.